Hi, welcome to Remember This. I'm your host, Denise Bolin, and I am so pleased to have back with me again my really good, very intelligent friend, John Dowling. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Denise. Always a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me. Ah, oh, it's great to have you. You know, every time we get together, I mean, you you just have so much knowledge and insight and you have great intel. You know, I've learned so much from you. My viewers have learned so much and we just can't get enough of of the great information that you share with us. So I'm just so thankful to have you back on. No, it's it's an honor, believe me. And, you know, I, I think about it, Denise, we were talking offline the other day. Uh, it's been about 10 months since our last show. I mean, how much how quickly time has flown. And, wow. you know, you and I started this almost two years ago. So it's kind of come full circle. It's very interesting. Yeah. And and uh, it's getting more and more exciting. To say the least. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to uh, definitely talk about the currencies, the bonds, mm -hmm. the RV. But before we begin, I just want to tell the viewers, if you're looking to get currencies and bonds, we have a great place you can purchase them. And there will be a link in the description below this video. So please make sure you uh, take a look at that. So, John, I'm going to do like a Q&A with you, if that's OK. Absolutely. OK. So for those that have never heard you know, our interviews never heard you speak about the uh, the, the foreign currencies. Mm -hmm. Let's let's start at the beginning. So um, a big question that people have is, you know, we're hearing in the media, they refer to the RV. Can you explain to everybody what the RV is? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll do it in, in the most uh, layman of terms, real simplistic. It stands for the revaluation of currencies. But going deeper than that, what it is, it's a reinstallation of the gold standard or the gold coin in place of the U.S. dollar, in place of the U.S. petrodollar. It, it reestablishes solid assets that uh, deal with, you know, trade and commerce and, and banking reserves. That's what it is. It's, it's basically undoing the mess that Nixon did in the 70s when he took us off the gold standard. It's a return to the center of real money. And so that's the global reset, the currency yeah. reset. Right. And the other benefit, obviously, is that, you know, those who are, are well aware of the situation, which I, your audience that should be everybody, uh, we're we've been so entrenched in other countries, businesses, as far as the deep state factions. So our hands will be untentacled off the rest of the world. And they likewise will be able to be freed up off the U.S. dollar and be able to power up in their natural currencies um, value and assets that they hold, basically. Okay, so now these foreign currencies, they're they're in the process of being revalued or already some of them have been revalued? Well, some of them have been like, you know, we've talked before, like Iraq and Vietnam, you know, Iraq in the 1980s under Hussein was actually closer to about five dollars to the U.S. dollar. So a five to one ratio split. Uh, Vietnam was 286 in 1986 before Russia took that over. So there are some countries who've had this happen before Germany in the 1940s. Uh, that's how they when they lost World War II, that's how they powered back up their I think it was their Deutschmark. And that's what brought them back to prominence was revaluate revaluing their currency. Kuwait in the 90s did the same exact thing. So this has happened historically before. What's different about this is the entire world has never gone through a wholesale reset. And, you know, you had situations where uh the Ayatollah Khomeini and Hussein were basically killed because they wouldn't go along with the central bank system. That's what really happened. We were sold that they were bad guys, but the truth is it was just the opposite. They wouldn't play ball with the deep state. So now the entire world is, like I said, being untentacled from the deep state factions that have held them down for far too long. And so these foreign currencies, um, they include the, the uh, Zimbabwe Zim. You want to name some of them? Sure. I mean, well, there's most notably the Iraq dinar, right? Everybody knows that. There's the Vietnamese right. dong. There's the Thai bot. There's the South and North Korean won. There's the Indonesian rupiah. Uh, there's, I mean, there's 209 countries and provinces total. So there's there's a lot. There's, you know, there's the Brazilian dollar. There's the Venezuelan boulevard. We always hear about that. That's, that's a big one that's going to be uh, up and coming again. They, remember, Venezuela was the fourth largest... Um, uh, yes. country in the world in terms of revenue. They were the fourth richest country in the world, as I was trying to say. Uh, so everything historically returns back to prominence. Everything is returning back to the center. 
uh, the bonds are Zim is a bond. Yes, they have a dollar. They have a Zim dollar, but uh, the bonds is what what we're really concentrating on, and we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. But bonds are treated a little bit differently than currencies. But yes, that is definitely a huge uh, powerhouse, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Okay, and um, would that include the Chinese bonds, the Chinese railroad yes. bonds? Yes, the Chinese railway bonds, the Pacelli bonds. That's right. Yep, absolutely. They're sort of in their own class. Okay, so for people that want to invest, but they can't make ends meet, and even now with the uh, mm -hmm. Bidenomics, um, right. they're really they're really having a tough time. <laughs> um, so, what would you say to them? Like, they want to yeah. get involved, but yeah, they I'm really glad you asked that question because that, that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, and I'm really glad you asked that question because that seems to be a chronically what I call a chronically repetitive question. I, I get. Every show I do, every video I do, you know, for my own channels, the, the invariably it comes up. So let's let's put this to bed once and for all. First and foremost, I understand the question. I know there's a lot of people hurting out there. I'm not exactly uh, on easy street yet either, um, but I want to help people to get there, especially God's people, as you know, that's your forte, especially. So I, I really want to help God's people get there. That's what kind of kicked off, you know, me doing this. Um, but the first thing I would say is I understand their question. I understand their situation in order to succeed at this mindset is everything. So the first question I would have for those people is, do they have the faith of a mustard seed? Because we know what mustard seeds turn into gigantic trees. I find most people in the world don't even have a faith of a caraway seed. So we have to get the mustard seed established. I'm being a little jocular, but I'm also being serious. Yeah. Um, we have to change collectively the mindset from fear to faith. Now, granted, not easy to do when you're living paycheck to paycheck. I've been there many times up against the wall, but that's when the faith is needed the most, right? That's when you have to press in. So that's my first response. The second response, and, and we need to be solution oriented. So I'm going to come up with at least one approach or a solution I've thought about that I think could work for not maybe everyone, but a good majority of the people in that predicament. Whether you're rich or poor or the soon to be ending middle class, everybody has friends and family. Everybody knows people right in your neighborhood, in your town, your community, your city, what have you, especially somebody like you who's well, you know, uh, connected in a large city. So I would start with friends that I know that have silver, who have gold, uh, maybe some, maybe a lot. I don't know, whatever their situation is. But we're, we're going to get back to a bartering-based system. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, but this is a good foray into that. So I would say to those people struggling, you may be struggling, but you are not helpless and you have talent. You have worth. God made you with a lot of talents, whether it's one or a hundred. Dust those talents off the shelf and start bartering with people that you know that have gold, have silver. Maybe they can part with one or two ounces, right? especially if they have a decent amount. Find a skill you have that they need. Let's say you're a seamstress or you can sew and knit and this person you know, goes through clothes a lot or they're hard on their clothes and they rip and tear, but they really like the clothes and they want to keep them, but they don't know how to sew. They don't know how to fix it. So they just go invariably and buy new stuff, but they really want to keep the clothes because you know, they're hard to find or the limited edition, whatever the case may be. If you have that skill, use it. If you have the skill of speaking, if you can pray over people, if you're prophetic or if you're knowledgeable in a certain area of life that that somebody else isn't and they need to know that, barter. Get into the bartering system now. It doesn't cost you anything. You have time or you have some time. Use it. it the point is where there's a will, there's a way. So get creative and use your skills to be able to trade off with somebody to get what you need and in turn give them what they need. And this way create a win-win situation. That sounds good. So people listening, I'm like, huh, we're going to be bartering. So are you saying mm -hmm. in the future we yeah. will be bartering? Okay. So what would lead up to that? You mean what will we'll bring that about? You mean? Yes. Well, yeah, a couple things. One. Um, okay. These are really great questions and they're very loaded ones. What's going to bring that about is that, our whole world's financial system, our whole way of doing things, I think we can agree is upside down. We don't treat each other right. We have this sense of entitlement. Everybody's angry. 
um, unsettled because we're going through the birthing pains of this shift. And as you know, as a mother, you've been through this a few times. The hardest part is when you're going through the transition. But then on the back end, it's beautiful, but you got to go through the pain to get to the joy. So our banking system is going to change because now with what's coming into play on November 19th, I'm not a date rate guy, but I do speak to concrete things. And as you know, being on my Telegram channel, I have shown specific articles pointing to the fact of this. Those who haven't seen it, you can vouch for it. November 19th this year, we're going to be going to ISO 20022. That is the standard of blockchain for the new digital world that we're going into. And this will encapsulate crypto, cryptos like XRP and XLM and you know Shiba Inu and things like that. Uh, standardized token coins that will be on the blockchain. Um, these currencies are going to be going digital. So they'll be tied in with the blockchain system, right? So think of it today. I'll give you an example, a real example. You use Zelle, you use PayPal, you use Venmo, right? Well, you're ostensibly one step away from doing peer-to-peer -peer transactions, right? If you take out them as the middleman, right, boom, they're the middleman. There's a middleman. We remove right. the middleman and that's going to be bartering. It's going to be electronic bartering. You know, I can, you're going to be literally able to buy a house with physical gold or silver or digital gold or silver or XRP coins like that, if you want, right. right. Where you can convert your currency into your own account through, through a, you know, we've talked about this before for a hardware wallet and pay that contractor, pay that builder, whatever, uh, through the digital blockchain because you won't have a middleman in about, I mean, don't hold me to the number, but, and I would say within three to five years, maybe less, we're going to be doing peer to peer banking. Cause as I've said to you before, the whole point of this, Denise is to free up God's people to use their talents, be financially independent, to be of service and be your own central banking system, have your own gold and silver, have your own cryptos, have your own land, have, you know, grow your own food. Those it's right. all about autonomy. Right. And if you think about it, it's the greatest act of service and self-sufficiency at the same time. It's kind of paradoxical, but it's true. We're going to be, this world is going to have to be unfortunately coast coaxed or forced into an environment whereby we're going to need each other again. I asked my grandmother who was born during the depression. Uh, she was, Let's see. She was 20 years old when the depression, Great Depression happened. And she was, you know, in her 30s, 40s during, you know, World War II. So she lived through some pretty prominent times as a kid. I used to say, hey, Graham, how did you make it through those times? She said, oh, we just bartered. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, I grew corn and carrots and my neighbor across the street yeah. grew, you know, potatoes and asparagus or tomatoes. And we just right. traded off. And I said, and that worked? She goes, yeah, it was fine. We didn't know that we didn't know any different, you know, we didn't know the different. We were none the wiser. And that's where we're going to, I believe, in the future. We're going to a bartering based system where people can deal with each other fairly and honestly, not cheating the scales, not having a middleman. We're not going to need a central bank. We never need it in the first place, but that's another right. that's a loaded conversation. But we're getting rid of that evil middleman that's held the entire world down. That's what President Trump has been making a concerted effort to do is remove the central bank. If you, He's going to be the third president in history to remove the central bank. Prior to that was Andrew Jackson in the 1800s. And he started campaigning on removing the central bank. Trump is doing exactly the same thing. He's exposing them right now. There's no war. There's no cover story. It's out in the open. Everybody has the internet. They can see clearly what's going on if they're researching and critically thinking. And your audience is certainly paramount amongst that. So this is why I say we're going to a bartering based system. But what I what I think is a great advantage other than the financial, you know, obvious benefits of this is we're going to be forced to need each other again. This self-entitled, I can do it myself. I'm doing my own thing. Me, my, I, blah, blah. Satan has got us in that trap of ego and pride. We need to just have it severed off clean. You know, I've certainly had enough. I'm sure you have. And I know God has had yeah. enough of it. So, so that's what I mean by going back to a bartering based system where we start helping our neighbors. We start right. working together. I have a neighbor just across my building, an older woman, and I only make this as an example. I don't usually talk about this stuff, but you know, I watch her, you know, I make sure she's got, you know, food and water. She's kind of shut mm -hmm. in just occasionally. I'll just put some food or water over her fence quietly in the middle of the night and just move on. 
And, you know, we need to get into that mentality and do it from a joyful perspective. So that's, that's what I mean Absolutely. by that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I'm here in New York and uh, I'm sure you remember the uh, big superstorm Sandy, which was, oh my oh, gosh, yeah. 11 years ago. The anniversary yeah. was just like, what, a week or two ago. A week or two, and yeah. Um, yeah. And we did just <laughs> that. We did just that. Like we had a generator. My neighbor had gasoline to, to get the generator going. You know, mm -hmm. who was bringing food, coming around with sandwiches and, and just everybody was helping one another and nobody was out for themselves. We were all concerned about our neighbors and how we could help our neighbors. And it was such a beautiful thing. So it was like this horrible, horrible disaster happened to us, yeah. destroyed our properties. We lost thousands and thousands of dollars worth of things, you know, sure. um, Thank God we didn't lose anybody because a lot of people lost their lives. But something really great came out of something really bad because everybody, you know, got together and was Stand helping together. each other. Yeah. yeah, it was a great thing. Yeah. And that's going to be a return to the center of that again, you yeah. know, because you and I have talked about this. Um, I always recommend to some of my, my friends or, you know, followers, what have you, um, there's a movie that I always allude to the big short, you know, the one with Steve yes. Carell and right. It, and, and you and I were both in New York when this happened. In fact, I was leaving New York right. uh, to move out here at the time of the Lehman incident. And that was referring to those who don't know the movie. It's, it's, it's sort of a chronicle of the 2008 banking crisis bailout. Right. And that was just here in the U S what we have now is a global bail in. And that has to do, unfortunately, with something called the Dodd-Frank bill, which were two Democrat senators who were putting it under the guise of allowing home ownership for everyone. But what it really meant, the all the fluff taken out and, mm -hmm. and New York parlance get to the bottom line, what it really was about was giving them the illegal ability for banks to take your money internally and get away with it. That's what that was really about. Uh, and so now we're dealing, it's not to fear people and just to educate people where we are now is take that movie now 15 years later and exponentially blow it up about a trillion times bigger. This is a global bail-in of the entire world's economy, not just real estate, right? Commercial real estate, the stock market, banking, what they call the M2 money supply, which is just your everyday money, your checking, your savings, put in your mattress, put it in your safe, put in a safety deposit box, which I never recommend, by the way, and I'll tell you why. You may remember a couple of years ago, there was a whole incidental scandal at the banks that banks were taking people's safety deposit boxes wholesale, oh, claiming them I, as yeah. their own, and then trying to force people to justify that it was actually theirs. Yeah. I mean, that That's a small microcosm of, of Dodd-Frank and what they want to do on a much larger scale. I, I got, they can I got, do that now. I mean, they can they can actually confiscate our money now within, yeah. With, yeah. and they're within their rights. Mm-hmm. Well, it's legal. It's not lawful. There's a difference. Right. Legal is under the corporation. Lawful is under the Constitution. Right. right. So they can make up the rules as they go. But that's the thing about where we're going to, Denise, with the banking is um, one of the advantages of going digital is everything's transparent. There's no more money laundering. It's not the mafia where they can, you know, you know, having a basement filled with hundred dollar bills and move them around and switch them around or counterfeit. It right. takes that right. Everything is right out in the open. Everybody gets to see it. The downside is everybody gets to see it. So having having physical assets, which you and I are going to do a show in the near future, once this is when I say like code red, it's on the doorstep of happening, which we're getting to that point, a, a practical show about what to do at the time of exchange, how to go about it, what to say, okay. what not to say. But the first thing I'm going to give people a hint is get physical assets, things you are probably going to do anyway. You own your own land. Get out of the cities. We've talked about that. Right. You know, uh, gold and silver, copper. We've done shows on that. Copper, uh, yeah. Heirloom seeds, grow your own food. In my case, you know, weapons for protection and just, you know, target practice. I'm not going to obviously shoot anybody, but just, you know, target practice and self-defense right. and my future family. Um you know, living out and having property, living in clean air, fresh water, no neighbors. <laughs> There's something to be said after living in cities for so long, like, you know, to have silence is golden. Um, you know, when you want to get together with friends and family, you can. When you want to have autonomy, you can. 
And so like you, I'm a private person. I like to have that, you know, that ebb and flow. I love being around people, but I also like my space. It gives you a oh, balance. Sure. And that's you the hard thing. Balance. Yeah. And that's the hard thing about cities like New York and LA is it's one or the other. You're either out there in the, you're out there in the boonies of the desert or you're at the concrete jungle. And, you know, I used to live on 46 and second. So on second, yeah. third Avenue. So I get it. You know, Dag Hammarskjöld area for those who don't know New York City. I, I lived right in the middle of it. So I, I, I know what it's about. And it's funny, Denise, every time I would walk past the UN, as I call unaffectionately the useless nations, um, I said, this place would be a great parking lot. But what people don't realize, they know it's bad, but they don't know exactly why. Do you know there's a statue right out in front of there that is a Baal Moloch? It's a lioness statue, and it refers to Babylon. I mean, it's right front and center. They're mm -hmm. telling you who they are. So that's the thing about the bad guys. They have to do everything in code. It's called predictive programming. They make right. movies. We think, right. like the big short, for example, we think, well, that was a chronicle of that time. That couldn't possibly happen again. <laughs> really? You're living through it right now. You know? I mean... Just wait until you're paying $45 for a loaf of bread when hyperinflation kicks in, you know? So, and you know, Revelation even talks about that, a day's yeah. wages for, for a loaf of bread. Yeah, that's right. Right, but see, a lot of Christians don't take that literally. They think it's more of a, a figurative thing. Some do, but not everybody does. And, and that's a mistake because history always repeats itself. Do we learn is the question. We're seeing that now with Israel. Very well, scary. Yeah. And we know we know what's going on with that and what's really going on versus what they're telling us. It's Ukraine 2.0. And coming up next, which is a good segue indirectly to your point, is China Taiwan. Because what that's about is freeing Vietnam from communism so they can power up in silver to make their dong go parabolic. And Iraq's going to do the same thing. I'm not going to discuss rate, I'm not a data rate guy, you know that, but I will give you clues. Going digital is a very good thing because your rate of return will be much, much higher than if it goes paper. So because because of two things, it gets them out of the sanctions that the U.S. imposes on everyone. Right. And two, they power up in natural assets. Right. And so the market can determine the value. And because it's been so controlled and tightly suppressed for so long, the ceiling is nowhere to go. If gold and silver and oil are going to go up, which we know they are, because they've been suppressed, they've been papering it down. Absolutely. I think I said this to you a while ago, but just to refresh your viewers' uh, memories, um, for people don't understand this, and I, I get it, but believe me, I've researched it. It's true. For every ounce of silver somebody buys, it shorts the banks a billion dollars in their balance sheets because they can't manipulate the paper market to control the price to where they can scarf it up. That's why they don't want you to have it because it takes away from their control, right? Right. And then, so I always say to people, ask the banks when they tell you you should get gold or silver when they ask ah, it's a barbarous role. Yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> really? Ask them a simple question. If it's not worth anything, why do you guys want it so badly? Why are you buying it on your balance sheets? Look, you see the information I put out there every day. Yeah. They just can't, China, Russia, in, in the BRICS nations, in the US are buying it. All the banks are buying it up like crazy. Well, I know a few years ago, I want to say maybe two years ago, the Bank of America was telling their high-end clients to purchase gold. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And here's another shocker for you. It's not. It's a little off topic, but it's still related. They lie about everything. They're saying that our, our national debt is $33 trillion. No. Try, try about 250 to $300 trillion. And those aren't my numbers. Those are Bill Holter's numbers who's a chief gold economist who's been on X-22. Every, people who know, know who he is. Those are his numbers. I vetted them. It's true. Well, they it's keep always, printing money. Yeah, they keep printing money. Well, that's and what's going to happen. Yeah. I have a friend at Schwab. Um, I'll just say his first name, Brooke. I've known him a long, long time. He's very high up there. And on the. Uh, he's just underneath the CIO, chief information officer for the tech side. And this guy studies the numbers like, and he's just brilliant at it, among other things. Great musician, too. And he's been telling me for a solid year. He's like, John, because we talk about this stuff all the time. He's John, I'm telling you. He said, by the end of 2023, dovetailing into 24, there's a time frame people might want to pay attention to, like now. They're, do, they're going to do what's called a melt-up. A melt-up is simply um, they just paused the interest rates last week with the Fed, which mm -hmm. on our inside group we knew they were going to do. 
I'm going to tell you right now, by December 1, look for a half a basis point to a basis point spike in the interest rates. It officially hit 8% now in the housing market to buy a house. It's now officially across the board nationally at 8%. That means it's going to be at almost 9% or more wow. come the end of this year. Right. So they're going to have one more print melt up the end of this year going into the first quarter of 24. Everything is just going to, it's it, the, the economy is like this. This is going to free fall big time. Now I know that sounds like a bad thing, but if you're positioned like we are, I don't care if you have one note, you have a shoebox of currency, right. just have God something, pick, something. Yeah. just get in the game. Yes. God will multiply like the loaves and the fishes. He's done Absolutely. it before. He'll do it again. If you trust him and take the leap of faith. So I tell people that get, you know what? You can't afford gold, get silver. Get silver, silver is cheap enough. Just get some. What is it? 23, 24 an ounce as of today. I haven't checked the last few hours, but uh, trading is closed, but it's, it's stupid affordable. And, and yeah. you're, and I'm going to tell everybody something that I've already told you. Silver is more valuable than gold. And you go, what? Here's why manufacturing. Everything, this watch I've got on, your iPhone, your computer, the chips that run your car, your TV, your monitors, that's all silver. And guess which country is manufacturing about 70% of that? Vietnam. Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam. 70% of the manufacturing left China to go to Vietnam. They're easier to do business with. They have a 34% what's called gross domestic product. That's how you base how the economy is doing, right? On profit and loss, PNL statements. Um, 70, they have a 34% uh, GDP the last 13 years. They don't have a manpower or a wealth issue or a, a, a resource issue. What they have is a communist issue. They've been held down. But we've talked about that with China, Taiwan. So silver is going to be, it is the bedrock now of manufacturing. It's only going to be more so with AI robotics and technology when all the new patents come out and you know what comes with that amongst many things, all, all those products are highly comprised of silver, which means these fortune 1000 companies are going to start looking for ways to get it when they can't mine it in the ground or there's a shortage, like a food shortage or something like that. They're going right. to be looking for what they're calling probably call a buyback program. Well, they'll highly incentivize, you know, Americans who have it, that don't want it or don't need it or maybe are willing to part with some of it to sell it back to them right so this now what you do is you start stacking your leverage brooke always laughs he goes he goes john you're you're like and i'm not a i'm not a poker player i'm not a gambler i don't i suck at that stuff i you know i don't i don't have the makeup for it. i've just never been into that i like i don't feel the need to throw my money away i know i'm gonna lose so, but, but he makes the analogy of that. I'm a good craps player. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, cause you have all your chips strategically balanced out. Right. So in that analogy, if you can't afford gold, fine, get silver. If you can't afford right. silver, get copper. Copper's $4 an ounce. It's, it's, it's a super semiconductor. It's used for copper piping. How many people, you know, do you hear on the news about new homes built and, you know, tweakers go in and steal the copper piping because yeah. they know what it's worth copper pans. What do you think makes up the fiber optics that have us talking right now? Copper. Copper. It's a great semiconductor. So when silver goes away or is greatly reduced, copper will be a great background. Palladium, platinum. At that point, you'll have monies to be able to leverage that. Right. The point is diversify. So there's always a solution. And you don't hear them advertise like on, on commercials to get copper. But, but people are buying it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your, your silver and coin dealers all know about it. That's how I found out about it a couple of years ago. One of my, my guys down the street who he, um, I like him because he has his own refinery going back to the refiner's fire, melting off the impurities. It's like going back to the Old Testament. And he does happen to be a Christian, which is really great. Um, but he also sells what's called newsmatic coins. Those are rare collectible coins, you know, rare, you know, silver eagles, uh, Krugerrands things. I mean, Krugerrands aren't necessarily numismatic, but they fall in that category of, you know, high end, uh, desirable metals. Okay. So another question is mm -hmm. when will we know that it's time to exchange, will we be notified individually? I mean, how will we know? Yeah. I laugh because I get that, that question all the time. Trust me, you'll know it's all, it's gonna be all over the internet, just like on the telegram channels, news is coming out for those of us who are awake and paying attention. We're, we're 
we're on the edge of our seat every time we get an update practically, you'll know about it. Um, also, I believe the mainstream will be forced to, the, the, the financial channels will be forced to make some type of announcement, something along the lines of, hey, you know, in breaking in other news, in Iraq is now rejoined the uh, the World Trade Organization is coming back on to the international stage and is welcoming the world with open arms for trade and commerce. Something diplomatic like that, mm. that the 99% of the people have no idea what it means. It'll go in one ear and out the other because they don't know. Uh, but for us awake folks, it'll be plastered all over the internet. I'll make sure I let my, my team know and the people that I work with them, follow me, no, it, it, it'll be out there. The, the, the one other way that you can know too is a very simple way. You just go on to the Iraq website, the Central Bank of Iraq. I think it's cbi.iq. Just go on there. Um, there's banks that have, Citibank has a foreign currency exchange hotline. Uh, you can call and get the 800 number and just type in the currency you want to know about and it'll tell you whether it's changed in value. So it, it it'll definitely be out there. Great. That's great information, John. What is the um, what's the difference between going to a bank to exchange or going to a redemption center? <laughs> it's another one that makes me chuckle. That's that redemption center stuff is guru talk. That's yeah. That's, yeah, it's nonsense. There there's not going to be redemption centers. Look, you bought the currency, however you bought it. Right. And here in the U.S., it's all tied to the Treasury Department. So. Um, you bought it from the treasury ostensibly through a dealership, right? Or if you've been in this a while, like I have, you could buy it from the bank back in the day. So the bank sold it, the banks will buy it, right? The, which goes back to your other question, how we know about it. The dealers who you bought it from will also buy it as well. So you're going to have a bidding war between the banks and the dealers, which is good for, for, for us because it's going to give you options, right? So, um, you're just, there's no redemption centers. That's to me, that's a scam. I really don't believe in that. I really no 800 numbers. Don't get mixed up in that stuff because you could be trapped. You don't know who you're talking to. You know, these people like, Oh, come to this hotel and we'll give you this yeah, no, contract like, rate. No, no, no. Can't no trust no. these people. Right. No, I, I wouldn't know trust the cards I throw them. That's guru nonsense about redemption centers and 800 numbers. Forget all that. Keep it simple, right? Kiss. Keep it simple. Well, it sounds like um, it, it's going to be. It, we're not going to recognize the banks anymore. The banks are going to be totally different than than the way they are oh, yeah. now. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, I mean, because they're moving away from retail banking, Denise, and the reason is we talked about this as well. I, you know this, but again, just for edification for your followers, um, you'll notice the mortgage mortgage industry. We're just talking about the housing market, right? How apropos. The mortgage industry is taking a nosedive. So they're laying off mortgage brokers oh, and yeah. workers. Right. People think that's a bad thing. No, it's a wonderful thing because we won't need that anymore. We're going into an age where people will actually be able to own their own homes and be able to afford it based on the money they make. And we're not going to have to have two and three mortgages or God forbid a balloon mortgage and ridiculous interest rates that should have never happened because that's all fraud and usury. Most people don't realize banks produce zero products and zero services. So it's all profit for them. Yeah. Right. Explain other, usury for those that don't know, because I had just recently learned that. that he fraud, goes, fraud, theft, theft. Just a fancy way. When they, you know, and, and you know. Borrow, borrow 100,000, pay back 400,000. Yeah. Seems like a fair deal for them, you know, and I will disclose as I always have to. I'm not a financial advisor. Thank God. I wouldn't. Me neither. <laughs> there are good financial advisors, like good attorneys, but they're few and far between. I have I have quizzed financial advisors. They don't even know what the difference between Basel three and four is. They don't know what a bond derivative is. I'll explain that. Bond derivative is a fancy way of saying toxic debt. That's what the mortgages were in big short. They would take tranches or combinations of mortgages. A was the high credit, B was the moderate, and B minus C were the 560 FICO scores and below, right? When they were just giving mortgages away to anyone, right? Didn't do a credit check, didn't do an income check, just get them in there and make the money, right? And so bond derivatives could be stuff like that. It could be CDs, money market accounts, um, um, you know, mortgage backed securities. It could be, I don't want to get too technical, 
but basically bank debt. Financial advisors work for the bank. They don't work for you. That's where people don't, they miss the mark, right? And why don't those financial advisors tell you to buy gold and silver? Hmm. Well, we just told you the answer there. So, you know, Basel three and four is simply this. Basel three is an international Swiss level of compliance, right? So what that does is every single bank, whether you're Chase all the way down to, you know, Heartland Community Bank in, in Wisconsin or something, at Middle America, great place. Um, every one of the banks has to be Basel III compliant. And all that really means in layman's terms is the banks have to be able to show how much gold and silver they have on their balance sheets. Why? Because that's the standard measure of where we're going. So your grandparents, my grandparents, they would work all day. They go to the bank when they had actual hours for the people and they mm -hmm. could literally cash their paychecks in, get cash and get gold and silver, right? We're going to do the same thing now, but it's going to be in digital form. But to do that, you have to have enough gold and silver to carry the load to be able to support it. And if you're not, you're out of business. Basel 4 is really specifically for the tier one banks, JP Morgan, Chase, Wells Fargo, because they have more liquidity typically than the smaller community banks. Not always, but more often than not. So the load is on them. But that's really all it is. Can you support the gold and silver to stay in business? Simple as that. I have one final question. Okay. Okay. What are the greatest benefits to having the godly wealth transfer? Well, we sort of touched on that in the beginning, but I'll mop that up and say, um, obviously, first and foremost, it's, it's, a, it's a wealth transfer from the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the righteous or the just. So God's people are finally going to be vindicated and blessed to do what we were put here to do. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> I said this to the men in my Bible study, you were not put on this earth to pay bills and die. I promise you that was not part of the plan. That's part of the Satan's plan, right? Uh, you're here to utilize the talents you have. If you're musically gifted, if you're business gifted, if you can speak to people, if you can pray over people, et cetera, et cetera, whatever right. your skill sets are. And more people have more than they know they have. They've just kind of put them to the side and forgotten about them. It's time to reclimate them and bring them back. So the wealth. Well, the other benefits is the purchasing power. When all this stuff crashes around us, which mm -hmm. we needed to, that gives God's people the greatest purchasing power. You will be able to buy stuff for pennies on the dollar that we talked about. So it's the, it's the ultimate profit loss dream. Simple European Albanese. You make your income, you got your bills. Money coming in, money going out. That's all mm -hmm. PL is. That's all mm -hmm. it is. They make it sound all fancy. It's not. It's just bankers are like lawyers. They complicate things that aren't complicated and they put fancy terms on stuff to give themselves job security and make it vague. That's it, cutting yeah. through the brass tacks. That's all it is. So, wealth, purchasing power. And I would say, and we touched on it before, I think it bears repeating this might be the most important thing. We are going to be forced as a world and a society for God's country here in the US to start needing each other again, start caring about each other again, because we're not going to have titles and cars and clothes and status and this and that to fall back on and say, well, I got mine. Really? How about now? You know, because you built your wealth on a paper fallacy. Now, real money, real conversations, real food, real body parts, real marriages, godly marriages, godly spouses, godly guardians slash children. Um, you know, people are not going to have to be in the cabal system anymore. It's going to be a freeing up and people are going to be forced to be nicer to each other and help each other, heaven forbid, and be able to serve their fellow man and woman. I think that's probably the singular greatest benefit. That is, that has got to be the best. But wrapped around it is everything else. So those are the three. And I think also things will cost a lot less. Oh, you oh agree? Yeah. 100%. You take the central bank out, you take, yeah. you take the balloon out of everything. You can, you okay, here's the other, can I just add, add one more thing? Um, sure. On top of helping each other, you actually get to utilize your talents and make a living at it and do well. And so do what you love doing. Yes. Doing what you love and loving who you do it with. So Here's a classic example. Everybody knows his example. The guy who lives on your neighborhood block, who maybe he works as a salesman or he works at a factory or whatever, 
comes home at the end of the day on weekends. He's the first guy up on Saturday morning in the garage working on his classic car. He loves it. He, he, he tinkers with it. It's not work to him because his, his heart's in it, his passion's in it. Well, that can be his, that can be his passion. His living can be his passion. He can start a, a, a restoration business out of his garage, maybe parlay sure. it into, his, into a dealership or something mm -hmm. and, and, and sell those cars and then you know repeat, repeat, rinse and repeat. And people will see the labor of love through his efforts. That's the world that we're entering into. And yes, when you take central bank out of it, when you take all the hyperinflate, all the inflation, which is artificial, and you back it by gold and silver and other assets that hold their value, that don't fluctuate, right? Yeah. They're consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, like our grandparents got to enjoy that life because they didn't have to deal with artificial things. You know, they were living better than we are we're going to be able to reap the benefits that they established for us and level the playing field again. So, so that's, that's another huge benefit. So things will cost exponentially less. Yes. For you personally, what is it that you would like to do when all this happens? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question, but I, uh, I'm going to move to Tennessee. I'm going to buy a compound. I'm going to grow my own food, live off the land. Um, you know, work out all the time physically, you know, doing, you know, weightlifting and basketball, things that I enjoy doing, uh, be pursuing my music full time because nice. I'll be able to do that uh, and be able to empower other artists that I believe in and invest in them. Because that's been my industry has been rife with, I think, we you know, corruption, just like acting, everything else where the cabal keeps down real talent and true artistry. And they pick and choose the people that they can control. And those people you think they're happy, they're not. They're miserable. I've seen those people in, in Hollywood or New York. And I'm sure you have too. And it's not as glamorous. You can attest yeah. to this as people think it is. It just looks nice. It's packaged nice. But when the lights and the camera and everything goes away, it's, it's a whole different deal. And, yeah. and those people would tell you to a man, don't, don't go the cabal way. Do it God's way. It's, it's miserable. It's a trap. So I'll be able to do it with God's money and not Satan's money. Um, you know that I was almost signed by Virgin a handful of years ago, and I've, I've met Richard Branson, and he was frankly one of the scariest people I ever met in my life. It was like looking into the eyes of the devil. It was, wow. it was chilling, and, and that was God's protection. So I'll be able to do that. I would like to lead at my church with the men's group. I want to be with a group of men that are already strong and pursuing God and have direction and add to the cachet. I don't want to be the strongest guy in there. I'd rather be the weakest guy and build my way up, you know, and then I'd like to get married and have my own, my own kids, guardians and, and be a husband and a father. And nice. um, I'd like to be a leader in the community, somebody that people respect and say, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm glad I know that guy. He makes my life better. That those are the goals I have. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for all of this information that you've provided for us. Um, you know, we, we, you know, God gives us things. He entrusts us with things and we have to be good stewards. So right. I really believe that this is very important to get in the game, like you said, and whatever you could afford and ask God, God, please make a way where there is no way for me to be able to afford maybe Absolutely. purchasing silver uh, currencies, you know, bonds. Right. Um, I think, you know, this is all coming out because God wants his people to, to be on, you know, the front steps, the front at the front door and, and to be equipped for what's coming. So thank, thank, just thank you for sharing all of that. And again, I want to just tell the viewers that we, you know, if you are looking to buy currencies, bonds, we have a great place that you can purchase them from trustworthy, um, uh, you're going to get good, a good deal. We'll put a link in the description below this video and you can reach out to them and you'll be very happy. One other thing I just want to say, Denise, before we close, and it goes back to your original question. I was thinking about it as you were sharing, Okay. what do we tell people that are living paycheck to paycheck or have a disability or just feeling depressed and down on their luck? Here's a simple approach. A lot of those people are very, you know, humble and, you know, caring people who've just been, unfortunately, you know, beaten down by life. And I, and I certainly get that. Um, open your mouth, ask for help. Don't be afraid. You'd be surprised. People, 
people need to be people need to be needed. You know, they like to be in a position. I mean, I'm talking about good people they like to be in a position to help, to be of use. So the people that you're asking for help also want to many times be in a position to help. But if you don't ask, if you don't speak up and say something, Absolutely. you'll never know. So very true. I, I speak to some people that I know and do you need anything? And they're like, well, you know, mm-hmm. yes, they need, they would never tell you that they need it. It's right. like, you got to pull it out of them. You know, what do you need? Yeah. You know, I'll bring it to you. I'll get it to you. Yeah. You know, so very true. Good point. <clears throat> Thanks. Good point. Well, thanks okay, for having so, me. It's always a pleasure. Oh, no, thank you. We have to do it again soon. This was wonderful. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, what does Columbo always say? It was a little before my time, but he had a lot of sayings. Columbo says, just one more thing. Just one more thing. Was that the voice thing or the this second This is thing? your birthday. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy oh, birthday God. to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you oh, and many thank you. more. Thank you so much. That's All right, very blow sweet. it out. <laughs> From California, come on, you got to blow a little harder than that. <laughs> I think I can wait till the sparkler dies. That I determines know. when it gets blown out. Sparklers. Gonna blow up the cake while you're at it. Try not to burn my laptop here. Yeah, I know. That's sweet. Thank you, sweetie. That's All so right, great. it's going. It's going. It's going. You know, Denise, you didn't have to do that thing. You did. Whoa. You're crazy. The cake, it's going to blow. <laughs> and I don't know what this sparkler is made of. Is it made of silver? I don't know. Uh, it depends if it's made in China, probably not. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably copper or tin or something. I don't know. Something along those lines. Uh, but, you know, I mean, copper and tin, you can recycle those too. You know, like you said, just get in the game. Get in the game. All right. <laughs> well, enjoy my cake. Would you? I will. Not that I need one, it. But... At least one of us will enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again, John. So until next time, um, please like the video, share the video, check in the description uh, for information where you can get currencies and bonds and <clears throat> get in the game. Yes. Until next time, we love you and God bless you. <laughs>